This sermon is titled The Sun of Righteousness Will Arise. Be enriched as you listen. All right, we have um, several testimonies that came in towards the end of the year. I, um, I won't be able to read all, all of them in detail, but I'll just quickly uh, review some of them, mention some of them. Uh, there was a testimony, just, uh, and a lot of these testimonies is thanksgiving to God or just celebrating God's goodness uh, through the course of 2021. So here's a testimony that, uh, you know, just uh, now the person acknowledges that 2020 and 2021 were tumultuous years, but he's giving thanks to God uh, for keeping him and his family safe. And uh, during this time, he, he testifies that God blessed him professionally. Uh, a promotion was uh, uh, given, and he had, uh, you know, uh, another promotion that, that just increased what he was earning, and so he was just giving thanks to God uh, for God's goodness uh, in his life. There was another testimony that uh, came in. Uh, it was one of our young people, young men, I mean, married and with a son, and um, uh, he uh, had a serious lung infection. This was uh, in December, in December. Uh, serious lung infection, and um, uh, you know, uh, he, he gives thanks to God, first of all, for the way the church family stepped in, and a lot of our church staff actually were there doing night duties uh, in the hospital, just being there for him and his family, and we were taking turns uh, to take care of him while he was in the ICU, so he just uh, wrote in to say a big thank you. Uh, he calls us his parents for being there for him, and uh, and uh, and uh, during that, I mean, it, he was he was in a very critical state, very critical state. Uh, but the church staff were there taking care of him, and uh, he also uh, shares. Uh, uh, you know, he had two visions of Jesus during that time, he, so he shares. Uh, some of those things in his uh, testimony, and just giving thanks to God for bringing him back, restoring him to health. Uh, he's back with his wife and son, so he gives thanks to God for that. There's another interesting email. This is from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, this person wrote, he says, you know, I listen faithfully to the sermons, uh, the Sunday sermons. He studies all the resources, absorbs the daily de video devotionals, and uh, he just wrote in to say, thank you for all the hours of dil diligent hard work that goes into making uh, the APC ministry so powerful and life-changing. So he says, I guess I would consider myself a media member of your church, all the way from the other part of the world. Um, one last testimony again, giving thanks to God for 2021. Uh, this person shares about... Uh, uh, one uh, about uh, uh, the preg uh, they had a baby baby girl I think it is yes yeah uh, God bless us with the daughter so they had a baby girl by just giving thanks to God for you know um, uh, the pregnancy was very difficult uh, the doctors were very 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 concerned but in the end you know they just believed God they uh, both of them the husband and wife they just believed God through the pregnancy and the end they had a normal delivery and a healthy baby so you give thanks to God for that and um, his family's health was protected and and God blessed them uh, in their workplace and so on so he giving gives thanks to God for all the messages that come through online to minister to them amen so let's just give thanks to God I, I'm sure you know there are many other testimonies many other lives that have been touched in the course of this year, some have just uh, taken time to uh, write in and give thanks to God, and we, we appreciate that. All right, so many of you were here yesterday. Uh, yesterday. How many of you here were, were here yesterday? You heard the word of the Lord? Okay. Uh, I'm just going to quickly mention uh, the word of the Lord for 2022. Go take your mountain. Conquer your giants and occupy your inheritance, right? So that's the word of the Lord. Uh, you could go online and just listen to it in case uh, you missed the, the message. And, you know, just follow the, uh, the example of Caleb. We outlined uh, in seven action points or action steps or steps of faith what Caleb did. He uh, knew the word of the word of God. He spoke his faith, rose above unbelief. Uh, he wholly fo followed God kept himself strong, and then he went out and he conquered his giants and occupied 
his inheritance. I encourage each of us to do that. Yesterday, I forgot to mention uh, the magnets. You know, uh, we usually make these magnets with the word of the Lord. I forgot to make mention of that, but they should be available uh, in the foyer. So on your way out, in case you didn't pick it up yesterday, you can pick it up one per household, put on your refrigerator. Uh, if you have two refrigerators, okay, maybe you can take two. Uh, I just keep it there as a reminder during the course of the year uh, for the word of the Lord. Uh, that should be available in the foyer on the way out. All right. Um, before we get into this, uh, the message this morning, I just want to you know, just give you a preview of what we planned for the year. Uh, so this year, uh, we are resuming our weekend schools, as was announced. So if you'd, love, if you'd like to attend the weekend schools, it's usually on uh, a Saturday uh, at our Bible College building. So come out there. We spend the day in the Word, just you know, studying things uh, that will really equip us uh, in our spiritual life. So weekend schools are back, and many of the other conferences will be coming back. And we'll keep announcing them uh, as we progress through the year. Just to give you an idea of what we're going to cover in the, from the pulpit ministry for 2022, uh, in January we'll be doing a series on how to receive what God has provided. Uh, in February we'll talk about the believer's authority, again just reminding us about the authority we have uh, as believers. In the month of March we'll be doing a book study, studying through the book of James, uh, a beautiful book, small book, five chapters, but very practical, very powerful. So we'll study the book of James um, in March. And uh, during April, we'll kind of get into some of the Psalms. We'll talk about some of the, uh, because of Good Friday and Easter, we'll look at some of the resurrection Psalms. We'll talk about Psalms that talk uh, on, on the crucifixion. So we'll study some of the Psalms. Month of May, we'll talk about faith and finances. Uh, just talk about how faith and finances, faith and money uh, go together. Uh, in June, July, there'll be several different short sermons on various topics. Um, in the month of August, we'll be talking about the four C's of leadership, talking about Christian leadership uh, and uh, the four things. All of us are leaders in one way or the other. You know, you're leading at home, you're leading in your workplace, you may be leading in church, you may be leading in so many other capacities. You may be a team leader, a project manager, a leader of a business, uh, whatever, and, and, and just understanding uh, uh, these four C's of leadership will be good. September, we'll talk about biblical sexuality. There's so much of uh, noise going around on the area of sex and sexuality, and uh, it's so important to have a very clear biblical perspective. Uh, a lot of believers were struggling in this area, and so uh, we felt it's important to address that, speak towards it, and, and see God work uh, in our lives in that area. So that's in September. In October, we'll talk about faith and science. Uh, so we'll talk about you know, God, creation, uh, the origins of the universe, and uh, some of that kind of topics we will discuss uh, during the month of uh, October, faith and science. November, December, of course, will be a time to prepare for Christmas, so. <laughs> uh, but uh, throughout the year, every month, the last Sunday of the month will be Supernatural Sundays. So those messages on the last Sunday will be geared towards uh, ministering the supernatural. I want you to take advantage of that and invite friends, um, invite people to come in uh, with needs, with various challenges in their life, especially every last Sunday of the month, the supernatural Sunday. Invite them, just tell them to come. Let them experience and see uh, God at work. Now, that doesn't mean other Sundays we won't have the supernatural. We will do it every Sunday, but those Sundays, are the messages are geared towards that. Are you excited? I'm excited. Sometimes I feel 52 Sundays are not enough. <laughs> it's like, God, there's so much that we need to bring to the church. Uh, we bring to people, and like 52 Sundays is like just a handful. Uh, but, you know, we do our best. This morning, please turn with me in your Bibles to uh, the book of Malachi, which is the last book in the Old Testament. And we're going to focus in on just one verse. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, the last book of the Old Testament, and uh, we're going to focus in on just one verse, Malachi 4, 2. So this message this morning is a very simple word of encouragement, uh, but I, I'm not, not only seeing this as a word of exhortation or encouragement, but also as a proclamation over each of our lives, that, uh, that this is a proclamation into 
our lives. And so I want you to receive it with that sense as well, saying that this word is being proclaimed into my life and God watches over his word to perform it. So I'm expecting that as we proclaim this word into your life, God will fulfill it. He will confirm it uh, working in your life situations. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. Let's read it out loud together, please. Let's go. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. But to you who fear my name. Is there anybody here who fears the Lord? All right, a couple of people. <laughs> Let's try that again. Is anyone here who fears the Lord? Yes, he's speaking about all of us, right? To you who fear my name. To you who fear my name. He says, this is what the Lord is going to do. The son of righteousness. And interestingly, in this verse, there are three different metaphors word pictures. There is the sun, there is the picture of a bird with wings, and then there is the picture of well-fed calves in the stall. And he's using these pictures just to communicate something to us. He says, to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness. That means God, like the sun, will arise. So the topic or the title of this morning's message, very simple. The son of righteousness will arise. And that's what I want to proclaim into each of our lives. That God will arise in your life like the sun. The son of righteousness will arise. Why? Because you fear the name of the Lord. You honor his name. You reverence his name. So unto you, to you who fear my name. The son of righteousness will arise. God will arise over your life like the sun. Amen? He will do it. And I proclaim that over you. And uh, what will happen when the sun rises over you? What will happen when the son of righteousness rises over you. Several things I just want to make mention. First of all, his light will shine upon you regardless of the darkness around you. Amen? When the sun of righteousness rises upon you, his light will shine on you regardless of darkness around you. The darkness around you cannot overpower the light of God breaking through into your life. Amen? In Isaiah 61 and 2, we are familiar with these verses. You know, he says, though there is deep darkness around you, the Lord shall arise upon you. Amen? So it doesn't matter the darkness around you. The Lord will arise over you. So let's declare this together. The darkness around me cannot prevent His light from shining on me. Let's say it again. The darkness around me cannot prevent His light from shining on me. Amen? The sun of righteousness will arise over you. And that means, it doesn't matter how dark things are around you, His light will still break through. The darkness around you cannot keep His light from shining upon you. Unto you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise. And if he is going to arise on you, his light will shine in your life. And the darkness around you cannot block out that light. Do you believe that? So you affirm that in your life. Even if there's things dark around you, you say, no, the son of righteousness is shining on me. His light will shine. And the darkness around me cannot stop his light from breaking through into my life. Secondly, when the sun of righteousness shines on you, his righteousness will break forth into your life. It's very interesting. It's called sun of righteousness. That means his light beams 
are bringing righteousness into your life. And in the Old Testament, very interestingly, the word righteousness, justice, and goodness are synonymous. That means, you know, the, the word, same word could be translated as justice. His righteousness, the son of righteousness, the son of justice. That means his light beams are bringing righteousness. They're bringing justice. They're bringing goodness into your life. That's what it means. Son of righteousness. It means righteousness is beamed into your life. And so his righteousness will break forth into your life. His justice will break forth. His goodness will break forth into your life. He said to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise. And when he rises on you, his light beams will bring righteousness, will bring justice into your life. So, you know, if there are areas of your life where uh, there has been oppression, there has been unfairness, where there has been injustice, where uh, what you are supposed to have has been withheld from you, when His righteousness shines in on you, His justice, His goodness is established in your life. Are you with me? Amen? And so you expect that. Because I fear the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, to those of you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise. His rays of justice will come through. And you can look at many scriptures. Psalm 103 verse 6, very familiar. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. You feel you're being oppressed. Maybe it's in the workplace. You're not being treated fairly. You're not being given the raise you're supposed to give, get. You're not being given recognition of the promotion you're supposed to get. Well, the Lord executes righteousness and justice. Maybe there's a legal battle going on. Well, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are so you declare that over your own life. Because I fear the Lord my God, the son of righteousness will arise. And his righteousness will break forth into my life. Psalm 37 verse 6, he will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. You see in both these scriptures, the word righteousness and justice are used. They are synonymous in the Old Testament. Righteousness, justice, righteousness, justice. So his justice, he said, God will bring it up, bring it forth. Your righteousness, your justice. What else will happen when the son of righteousness? So let's declare this together. His righteousness, justice and goodness will break through in every area of my life. Let's say it again. Say it like you mean it. His righteousness, justice and goodness will break through in every area of my life. Because the son of righteousness will arise on you. Amen? What else will happen when the son of righteousness rises over your life and mine? In darkness, the Lord is your light. And the prophet Micah said this. He said, you know, I will look to the Lord. Micah chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Let's say this together. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. You know, sometimes life can corner us in a dark spot. Not because we did something wrong, but something happened. And you're cornered. Oh, I'm in a dark spot. I'm in a difficult situation. It puts us there, suddenly. But you can say this. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light. Because to you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light. Amen? The Lord will arise all my life. He's going to shine in. And so even if situations happen that corners me into a dark spot, whatever it might be, you know, sometimes there are things that are outside our control. We don't make those decisions. 
if an employer decides he needs to let people go, well, they're doing it for valid reasons, but that might put you in a dark spot momentarily. But don't get discouraged. The sun of righteousness will arise. When you sit in darkness, the Lord will be your light. When I fall, I will arise. Amen? What else? When you and the Son of Righteousness arises over us, we will look to Him and become radiant. Psalm 34 and verse 5 says, They looked to Him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. You look to God, you become radiant. You don't have to be ashamed. So you say that. I look to God, and I am radiant. And I will not be ashamed. Because when you look to God, the sun of righteousness is shining on you. And the Bible says, he makes you radiant. Radiant means you're feeling, you're glowing. You're not ashamed, not hanging your head down. No, I look to God, I will not be ashamed. Because the sun of righteousness is shining on my life. Because I fear his name. Amen? So let's declare this together. I look to God and I become radiant. All shame is dispelled. Let's say it again. I look to my God and I become radiant. All shame is dispelled. So in life, when you're going to situations, maybe as a student in your, in your school or college, or maybe in your workplace, or maybe in family situations, you know, if the situation is going to make you feel ashamed, bring shame, people laugh at you, mock at you, make fun of you, whatever. Remember this. To you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise. And when you look to him, you will be radiant and will not be ashamed. So you say that boldly. God, I look to you. Your word says, I will be radiant. I will not be put to shame. So I'm not going to be ashamed in that situation. One last thought here. What will happen when the sun of righteousness arises over us? Our path will get brighter and brighter. So as the sun rises over your life, your path in life is going to get brighter and clearer. Proverbs 4.18 says the path of the just is like the shining sun. Just like the sun rising up to its zenith at noonday. And your path is clearer. So when the sun of righteousness arises over your life, your path is going to get clearer. You will know which way to go. What path to take. And God has promised to you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will arise. I want to point out two more other things from Malachi 4.2. It says... He, the sun of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. So there's a sudden change in metaphor. From sun, it goes to wings. To you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. So really, the picture is that the light beams of God will cover you just like a bird with his big wings would cover its young ones. And when those light beams of God cover you, they cover you with healing, with healing, wholeness, well-being. Amen? Amen? So he's just using a different picture, but the idea is that God will so cover you to bring healing, wholeness, and strength, and energy, and vitality to you. So the sun of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings, or to cover you with healing and wholeness, health, and strength. 
So you acknowledge that. Because I fear the name of the Lord my God. The son of righteousness arises over me with healing. In his wings. He covers me with his healing. The light beams of God keeps me in that place of healing, health, and wholeness. Believe that. Declare that for your life. I'm not saying we won't have challenges in life. As long as we are on this earth, there is sickness and disease and things around us. So they would sometimes come and uh, you know, affect us. But this is his promise. He covers you with healing. Amen? And what is the result? He says, finally, in that verse in Malachi 4, 2. And you will go out and grow fat like stall-fed cows. That means the sun of righteousness arises over you with healing in his wings. And what are you going to be like? You're going to be well-fed, well-nourished, like well-fed, well-nourished cows. In other words, a picture of growth, of strength, of increase, of well-being. That will be the result that you will grow, increase, and prosper. Amen? So, this is God's proclamation. Worship team, please come. This is a simple message this morning. I want you to believe it. Malachi 4.2 To you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise. With healing in his wings. And you will go forth. Like those calves that are well fed and strong and healthy and blessed and prosperous in life. That's what will happen. And I want you to expect that. And I release that word over you. As a proclamation of God over your life. I want you to expect that. That his light will shine. The darkness around you cannot prevent his light from breaking forth into your life. His righteousness and justice and goodness will be established in your life. In darkness, the Lord will be your light. And you will look to him. You will become radiant. And shame will be dispelled away from your life. Your path will get brighter and brighter, clearer and clearer as you journey forward. His healing rays and rays and beams will cover you, keeping you in good health and strength. And you will grow, increase, and prosper because the sun of righteousness is shining upon your life. Amen? Let's rise to our feet, please. Today, right after we dismiss here, uh, we have a water baptism service, so I will not be here to pray for people. As soon as the service is over, uh, we will be going across the street to uh, the swimming pool in St. Joseph's. There are different people who have uh, signed up for water baptism, so we will be going ahead into that water baptism service. Those of you who want to come, you're welcome uh, to come uh, and just be a witness there at the water baptism service. Let's take a few moments to pray. And I want you to receive this word. That God, yes, because I fear the name of the Lord my God, because I honor the Lord my God, He will rise upon me like the Son of Righteousness. The Son of Righteousness will arise over my life. His light will flood my life, changing things around me. And He will cover me with healing. And He will bless me with strength, increase and in growth. So that I will be like those calves that are well fed. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I proclaim this word of every person in this auditorium and those watching online, God. To those of us who fear your name, 
your word says the son of righteousness will arise I pray that everyone here will experience the light beams of God breaking through into their life situations the light beams that bring righteousness justice and goodness the light beams that cause our faces to be radiant and dispel shame away out of our lives the light beams of God that cover us with healing health and wholeness the light beams of God that so touch us that we will be like well-fed cows strong and healthy and blessed by God so father I proclaim this in every circumstance in every situation God for people who might be feeling that they are right now sitting in darkness Lord you are their light you are their light for those who might be at the receiving end of some form of injustice and unfairness and God your beams of justice will break forth into their situations causing righteousness justice and goodness to be established in their lives father because the word has been released over them let them see a performance let them see things happening in their life situations in accordance to what has been spoken over them this morning let them see it happen God quickly in their life situations the Son of righteousness shining let them see it happen Father, even for those in this auditorium, those watching online who may need healing in their bodies, we thank you. Your word says you'll flood our lives. You'll cover us with healing in your wings. So in the name of Jesus, let the healing of God take place in their bodies, in their minds. In the name of Jesus. Let illnesses and diseases be removed. Because you cover us with healing. You cover us, you clothe us with healing. So let healing fill our bodies. Displacing sicknesses and diseases. We thank you Lord. We bless you, God. We honor you. There seems to be like a condition that I'm seeing right now. It's like from your knees on down, your muscles have been affected. I don't know what it's called medically. But from your knees on down, the muscles have been affected. Atrophied. Just... But God is healing. God is restoring. He's covering you with healing in His wings. So I want you to receive and say, Yes, God, strength will be restored. Knees on below to the muscles that have just lost, whatever. That healing is coming. He's arising over you with healing. So God, thank you. Thank you. That people will see these, those with this condition will see restoration. I want you to go get yourself checked and then testify to the goodness of God. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, God. Let the light of God shine in and dispel darkness. Whatever form that might be in people's lives. Let chains and bondages be broken as the light beams of God shine 
into people's lives. Let deliverance take place, God. Let the chains of uh, habits and things that are enslaved people be broken by the light beams of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let darkness forever be dispelled from their lives. Because you shine, Father. Thank you. Thank you. And we bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you. Amen. Do you receive it? Let's say this together. Because I fear the name of the Lord my God, the Son of Righteousness arises over me with healing in His wings. And I am so blessed. I am so strong and prosperous. The Son of Righteousness arises over me with healing in His wings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You believe it? Amen. God will do it. Go expect things to happen. Expect the light beams of God to flood your life. Amen. Let's give Him praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to uh, pronounce the benediction. And after that, the worship team will lead us in a song. Whatever song you want to and you could, you know, you just feel free. You want to stay and sing or whatever you wish to do. Uh, you just have to excuse me and family. We're going to just go over to Joseph's to get ready for the water baptism service. Those of you who've come prepared, we will meet you there uh, for the water baptism service. You know, we're having water baptism after two years. <laughs> well, I'm really excited. <laughs> so, for two years. We didn't have water baptism today. First time we're going to be doing this. So I'm really excited. And uh, thank, uh, we look forward to that. All right, let's receive the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources including sermons, sermon notes, publication, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcbiblecollege.org. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Store.